Hello my friends, Hank here from Spruce and Bruce Scale Modeling, and today we're going to be taking on a special project. Just last week, the United States announced that we'll be sending 31 M1 Abrams main battle tanks to support the Ukrainian military in their defense against the Russian invasion. So for this video, we're going to be refurbishing and repainting one of my old Tamiya 135 scale Abrams kits in Ukrainian markings and camouflage. Since these vehicles haven't hit the ground in Ukraine yet, we'll do a little speculation as to what these tanks will look like in Ukrainian service. So we'll reference some images of existing vehicles in the Ukrainian arsenal and we'll give it our best shot. Before we get started though, I'd like to point your attention to this fundraiser right here, if you're on desktop and just below if you're on your phone. If you can, please consider making a small donation to Scale Modelers for Ukraine. 100% of the proceeds will go directly to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, which is a UN agency helping to provide safety, protection, and assistance to the millions of people displaced throughout Ukraine since the Russian invasion began in February of 2022. Winter is in full swing and your support will go a long way towards helping some of the most vulnerable populations in Ukraine as they navigate this extremely difficult time. If you'd like to learn more, I'll have links to the UNHCR website in the description below. Thank you for your consideration and with that said, let's hop right into the video. Alright, so here's my old M1 Abrams kit. I built this guy up years ago and started a refurb project on it last summer and never finished, so this will be a great opportunity to give this kit a nice upgrade. The Ukrainians will also be receiving Challenger 2s, Leopard 2s, and AMX 10s from Great Britain, Germany, and France respectively. So if you're following along at home, you could do this paint job on any of those kits as well. The first thing we've got to do here is give our kit a nice flat black primer coat so we've got a clean slate to work with. And then we're going to grab some 4BO Russian green to start our base layer of camouflage. This is going to go all over the vehicle and serve as our main armor color. The only thing we don't want to be green here is our tracks, of course. Once that's done, we're going to apply our first coat of gloss varnish. This is going to protect our base colors ahead of some fun painting techniques we're about to do. I'm using some AK Interactive Intermediate Gauzy Agent, but your gloss varnish of choice will do. And once that's applied, we're going to break out our hairspray. If you've seen some of my other tutorial videos, hairspray works great as a chipping medium for paint weathering. All we need to do is very carefully spray a little bit of the liquid into the cup of our airbrush so we can spray it on just as we would with any other varnish clear coat. We're going to go ahead and apply that hairspray coat and let it dry, and then we're going to start adding some camouflage tiger stripes, so to speak, with some flat black. We're taking some liberties here, of course, because we don't know exactly what these tanks are going to look like in Ukrainian service, but I like to look at this green base with some dark black disruptions. No real rhyme or reason here, I'm just going to go along and freehand brush in a couple of big stripes, one on the front of the tank and one behind the turret. Next, we're going to pop our turret back on there and continue the striping that we just started on the hull up on the turret as well, so those patterns match. Looking pretty good so far. Next, we're going to try and replicate some of the striping cross marks that you see on many Ukrainian vehicles in the news to help distinguish them from their Russian opponents. Worth mentioning, we're not going to use any decals today, so no matter what kit you've got at home, you should be able to recreate this look without too much trouble at all. I'm just using a bit of Tamiya masking tape here, and I've masked off stripe lines in one big cross that goes from bow to stern and side to side on our hull. We can paint those in with a bit of satin white, and once that's on, we can carefully remove our masks. These don't have to be super crisp, it's honestly better if they're not, because these markings would be applied by soldiers in the field and they definitely wouldn't be perfect. Now 
Next, I want to apply some national markings in Ukrainian blue and yellow. I've chosen and masked off a few panels on the vehicle that we're going to paint up in this manner. I'll flash up some reference images as we go along here to show you the kind of effect we're going for. Since the Ukrainians are using many of the same Soviet-era vehicles that the Russians are employing in the war, it seems that the Ukrainian fighters aren't shying away from flashing the bold colors of their flag on their vehicles to avoid any friendly fire issues. For our flag yellow, we're going to use some zinc chromate yellow that's going to go on first. We can carefully spray this in on all the panels that we've masked off and designated for our Ukrainian markings. Now a few of these I'm going to keep just yellow, but for the rest we need to add the blue in the Ukrainian flag. It's a relatively simple flag to paint, fortunately, so we just need to mask off the bottom half of the portions we've just painted. Next we can take a little medium blue and spray in those remaining sections to create the top half of our flag. We can give those a moment to dry, and then it's time for the moment of truth. Let's pop those masks off. This is always one of the most rewarding parts of the build. I'm very happy with how these came out. Probably a bit over the top with the flag markings, but hey, this paint job is an important symbol as well, so I went big. Now remember that hairspray we applied a few minutes ago? It's time for that to shine. We're going to do a little bit of hairspray chipping on all of our markings and camouflage that we've painted so far, and to do this we just need to grab a stiff bristle brush and a bit of tap water. Following the pattern of motion, so side to side on the hull skirts here to match the way the vehicle would be moving and brushing up against foliage, we're just going to lightly brush the model and you'll see some very natural paint chips starting to appear. We can also use a hard tool, like the back of our tweezers, to create some longer scratches as well. This process can be repeated all over your tank to your liking and it adds a great bit of character and realism to the paintwork. It helps make it look like the vehicle has actually seen some action. Now at this point I paused and painted in some of our smaller accessories like the turret MGs, tow cables, and the stowage in the turret bustle. And if you'd like some tips on painting up these parts, I'll link to another one of my tutorials right here. With all of our painting done, it's time to start weathering. To start, we'll need to apply another gloss coat to protect all of our work thus far. Once our varnish is dry, we're going to start out with our trusty Ammo Dark Wash and Enamel Thinner combo. Following along the major panel lines, recesses, and raised details of our build, we can brush in a little bit of the Dark Wash to help create some artificial shadows, as well as some accumulated grime on our vehicle. Once that's applied, we can take some of our enamel thinner and help the wash flow into all the little nooks and crannies of our build to help accentuate those details. 
Thinner also helps us remove and spread out any of the excess product that we don't want to accumulate on the tank. We can repeat this process all over our vehicle. It's amazing how a simple wash can add a tremendous amount of depth and detail to a model. Just remember as you're working with the thinner to always brush the product in the direction of gravity. That way any streaks and grime you create will appear natural and authentic. Once we're happy with our wash, we can walk away for a bit and let the product dry completely. We're going to keep our weathering pretty simple today so we can focus on the Ukrainian markings of this vehicle. In a later video, we might come back and really grind this thing up, so stay tuned. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see that. Once our enamel products are dry, all that's left to do is apply a flat, clear coat to protect our work and we'll be ready to check out our finished product. And there you have it, our M1 Abrams in Ukrainian markings. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, please consider donating to Scale Modelers for Ukraine to help provide relief to refugees affected by the war in Ukraine. And until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.